so today I'm talking about a P015B code, what it is and how you can go about fixing it. And so what is a P015B code? Well, it's an O2 sensor, delayed response, lean to ridge, bank one, sensor one. And so what does this mean? Well, basically there's what's called O2 sensors and they're located down on the exhaust and they do two things. The first thing they do is they monitor how much oxygen was burnt off during combustion. And they report this information back to the computer, which then uses the information to adjust the air fuel ratio mixture that's going into the cylinders. And then the second thing they do is they monitor the catalytic converter. But when you get this P015B code, the computer seeing some kind of issue with one of these sensors, mainly this bank one sensor 102 sensor. And so it's going to be troubleshooted to know why. And if you have a V6 or V8 engine, you're going to have two banks on the engine. Bank one is always the side of the engine with the number one cylinder. So if you Google your engine and like cylinder location or firing order or something like that, and you locate the number one cylinder on your engine, since there is differences, then that side of the engine is going to be bank one and the opposite would be bank two. The basics of what's going on with these O2 sensors is that there's going to be two sensors on each bank of the engine. Sensor 1 is going to be located before the catalytic converter, and it's also called the upstream O2 sensor. And sensor 2 is going to be located after the catalytic converter, sometimes right on it. And it's also called the downstream O2 sensor. And so when you get this code, the first thing to do is to locate this bank 1 sensor 1 O2 sensor on your particular vehicle. And so what would be some possible causes of a P015B code? Well, the first thing that could cause is that there's some kind of issue going on with that O2 sensor that has just gone bad and just needs to be replaced. And so the first thing I would do is I go test that sensor and check to see if it is good or bad. There's some different ways to go about testing those O2 sensors. If you have a good OBD2 scan tool, you can use it. Basically, you go into your scan tool and you select data stream or live data, however it's labeled, and you select that bank one sensor one O2 sensor. And what you want to see is you want to see a pattern like this. You want to see it going negative and then positive and then negative and then positive, just like this. If it's not, if it's flat, then you know there's some kind of issue. Or if the voltage is stuck like high, which would mean a rich condition, or low, which would indicate a lean condition, then you know there's some kind of issue going on there. There's some good YouTube videos on how you go about testing these O2 sensors with the scan tool. I made some videos on this. I'll put a link down below in the description box if you need to check that out. But if you have a good OBD2 scan tool, you can't use it to test these sensors because the first thing that could cause this is a bad bank one sensor one O2 sensor. And the next thing that could cause this is some kind of wiring issue. And basically just keep in mind that if there's any kind of open, short, bad connection, a blown fuse, something like that, then that's going to cause problems. So you can't go and get wiring schematics for your particular vehicle because there will be differences. You can go and check and be sure that it looks like it's good. And there can be two wire sensors. There could be three wire sensors. There could be four wire sensors. These four wire sensors are fairly common. And basically what's going on with these is that they're going to have a heater element built into them. And these O2 sensors, they can't get accurate readings until they heat up. And so that the computer doesn't have to wait for the engine to warm up and then the exhaust to warm up. They have these heater elements built in that help it heat up really quickly. So these heater elements usually have 12 volts going to them. And they'll be on a fuse and a relay. And then there'll be two wires going to the oxygen side of the O2 sensor. And those wires will be going back to the computer. There'll be a ground and then there'll be a signal wire. So if you get wiring schematics for your vehicle, you can't go and check and be sure that there's no open shorts or anything like this. Because the next thing that can cause this is some kind of wiring issue. And the next thing on the list is going to be that there's an exhaust leak. And basically, if there's an exhaust leak, then the outside air is going to be getting into the exhaust. And it can throw those sensors off. It can cause them to get bad readings, which is just going to throw everything off. Usually, that causes the sensors to read a lean condition. So basically, just keep a lookout for any kind of exhaust leaks. Because the next thing that can cause this is an exhaust leak. And the last thing on the list is that there's going to be some kind of problem with the engine that's causing it to run too lean or too rich on bank one side of the engine. And this basically means that the air fuel ratio mixture is off. But usually when that happens, you're going to get other codes. So for example, say you got an injector code on cylinder number three. Then you got a P0172 bank one system too rich. And then you also have this P015B code. Then in that case, it's a good idea to go check out that fuel injector on cylinder number three because it might be dumping too much fuel into that cylinder, which is causing bank one to run rich, which is going to trigger this P0172 code and also trigger that P015B code. So basically, if you're getting any other codes, be sure to pay attention to that because the last thing on the list is going to be that the engine is running too lean or too rich on bank one side of the engine. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing a vehicle with the P015B code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe and have a good day.